Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I have to say my location today is utterly astounding. I'll show you. I hope this is turning out all right. Way down here, you can't quite see it, but this is the Pacific Ocean down here. Way down the hill there are all these beautiful homes in the Pacific Ocean kind of socked in by fog today which makes it nice and nice and cool here in the winter time so just I thought I'd briefly describe what's going on right now at this pivotal moment in March March is always an interesting month when all kinds kinds of astounding changes can take place and um, and so this March is no exception uh, March the 7th, no, March the 8th, it's been changed. Uh, there's going to be a meteor flying by Earth. They say now at NASA, quite a distance from Earth, so no trouble. But you know, meteors bring um, information from other places to Earth through Earth's, uh, communicating through Earth's electromagnetic field. So we'll be getting some information from that meteor. Who knows what? And so, and it flew by too in 2013, so we'll be getting more of the same information, whatever that was, or whatever it's picked up along the way since then. And then uh, it's going to be flying by again in a few more years, a couple more times it will fly by. But, so the meteor, now they say on the 8th of March, at great distance from Earth, that's what they're saying, but always a wonderful event. And, uh, bringing with it the kind of knowledge that has to do with with rocks and minerals and the unknown pathways, the axiotonal lines that stretch through space to other constellations. News from the stars through the, through the meteor uh, event. And then the following day, I hear uh, there's going to be almost a new moon and a, a solar eclipse not on my side of Earth, but out in the middle of the Pacific especially. So these things are bringing in new information to Earth, changes to Earth's electromagnetic field and also to the human electromagnetic field. So the question that, that we have as the people of New Earth is, shall we say yes or shall we say no to these changes? Right? Do we want to be in sync with Earth's electromagnetic field as it changes, or are we going to stick with what we had before? So, do we want to be in harmony with the change that's going to be happening to Earth in the next week or two? Do we want to, do, are, we, are we feeling a little trepidation, a little fear about change, and do we want to stick with what we had? Well. Now's the time to decide that, and just as a kind of an assist, assistance to that, I'd like to say what I found in the past is when I delay with transiting and receiving the information, of course the information will be there for us whenever we decide to accept it, but if I delay and I become out of sync with the, um, the uh, what you might call the new wear of Earth, Earth's electromagnetic field, and uh, there's like a jangling in my own electromagnetic field and a change in my um, astral stories that I hear that is um, is misqualified energy expressing itself through these astral stories and and also throughout my entire electromagnetic field so it's less pleasant for me if I say no <laughs> even even say no for a little while it's, it's less pleasant so I'd like to propose that uh, whatever trepidation we feel about these changes it might be better to just sit or walk or or just say yes do something joyful to say yes it's okay with me Earth's all right with me I'm glad to be here I'm glad to be part of this great change <laughs> And so, in addition, what I've noticed today, the lead up, right, has been going on for a while now. Massive changes happened in my, um, in my body of light over the course of the last couple of weeks. And little by little, in a way that makes, reminds me of the Creator's care for all His creatures, including me. Because um, I only got changes 
sequentially, starting uh, in my left chest, going down to my lower intestine uh, in the course of a week, and then up, uh, up through this area here in the last week, uh, and no doubt many more in store. Massive changes, and all for the better. Um, well, what I've been noticing in the clear plane today is something that, that Sandra Walter wrote about, I think it was today, Sandra Walter Creative Evolution website. She wrote about um, the choices that we have, and uh, she wrote about this, this date of the ninth, and she also talked about how we have to, you know, how, how things are going to be presented with clear choices. Whether we choose no or whether we choose yes in this instance is going to be really clearly reflected, for instance, in my idea, in the, in the Claire chatter. You know, today I'm hearing all kinds of Claire chatter that's very, very dense and misqualified and full of um, uh, upset and uh, pain and uh, uh, suffering and like that. But that's not part of who I am and what I am, you know. It's, it's, it's very interesting how, how these shifts um, allow us to make such firm choices, you know. How we choose between pain and suffering and ignorance, or joy and peace and love and light, for instance. In each instant. In each instant. So, uh, I think we always have that choice and there's never the need to despair. Absolutely never. We may have made a hundred million wrong choices, but if we make one right choice, one step in the opposite direction, we will be met by, by grace a thousandfold for sure. So, so don't despair. Make one right decision. If you feel that you've been walking the wrong track, turn around and look in the other direction. See what's there, you know? It's okay. Sometimes our choices, if we make the wrong decisions, or even the right decisions, sometimes it's just the time, time of passing for us, the right time of passing, you know. But we can hasten that time of passing if we make a series of wrong decisions to do, to do with acting out in the new reality. I've talked about acting out before. And by acting out, I mean um, things that are very clearly um, violent acts, for instance. Um, very clearly, not acts of love and light. For instance, uh, injuring someone else. As they say in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. The point of the Ten Commandments is, is, is I think, that in those days when Moses gave the Ten Commandments to the tribe, the, he knew that if people didn't follow those commandments, then the tribe couldn't stay together. It just couldn't. They're so important, you know, in keeping people harmoniously living together. That's how I think that it came down. And, and why are those commandments important today? They're important because uh, if we make these choices according to the Ten Commandments, we will get through the ascension process in grace and ease and joy. But if we choose otherwise right now, then we will find ourselves in a pile of woe. And that is the truth. More and more woe will come our way. Now people get mad at me for saying the Ten Commandments are pretty cool in this day of, of libertine behavior and this day of doing whatever you want, you know, it's, and, and this day when many are descending into lawlessness. Um, all I can say is it's, it's really in your best interest to give them a try, you know, because you can avoid so much pain by following them right now, this week, and next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so good luck on that. I know it's, it's a hard one, and should you choose to, to try it out, uh, very good luck on it. It'll turn your path around towards joy and peace and love. Um, and if you choose otherly, there may come around, you know, another time, another change up, more, more new wear, or another time when this new wear can be installed. It's still possible, you know. And, um, 
And if you should say no, 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 straight down the line to this ascension process, it's not necessarily that you will be lost forever, but rather that you will go through another age of darkness, another 11,000 years most likely, of darkness after the 2,000 years of light, and learn more about your choices and, and what God is and what your soul is, see? So, so I don't look on it as an impossible situation in any case, but I do offer this advice that if you, if you care to become more aligned with the will of, the, will of God during the next couple of weeks, give the Ten Commandments or the like a try, okay? Live by your highest tenets, you know? If there's one tenet that you can't live with, you can live with all the others, do that. <laughs> do what you can, you know. Live in joy. And let all of the suffering of the past go. Forgive everybody. Everyone. <sighs> so, that's what I'm thinking. And, um, and we can take our minds out of those old tracks, those tracks of of woeful sadness and, and unkindly behavior and competition and uh, hurting other people for our own best interests, nationalism and uh, religious um, cul-de-sacs. <laughs> the desire to, to circumvent the law for our own he helpful interest um, in grouping, of all sorts, um, the idea that we're better than other people, when in fact it's just a question of us being different from other people. We have so many cultural assumptions, for instance, so many notions that the way that our culture and all the people that we know and grew up with do something is, is ipso facto the right way, right? But it's not the right way or the wrong way. It's just the way we learned when we were small without needing to question it because everyone did the same thing. Many other cultures do many other things. And this is okay too, you know. They say that there's a place on the astral plane, high up on the astral plane, where good people of each culture can congregate with other people of the same belief. And this is kind of a cool notion. For instance, they say, um, there's a happy hunting ground for Native Americans, maybe even divided by tribes, who knows. Then there's a place called Summerland, too. A place probably where the Valkyrie hang out, you know, until they want to go back into service in the world through a new incarnation. So each different group, I think, can choose to be with people of similar persuasion during the shift. And if they are just have that, that tolerance to allow other people to be the way that they are too. Yeah, that'll help a lot. So those are all my thoughts for right now. I wish you very good luck with this, this, these changes that are taking place in March. And, and probably the next time you see a video, we'll all be very different and very new. I do have a codicil, a postscript, and that has to do with these astral stories that are coming up now extremely um, warped and negative and misaligned and so forth in energy. Um, my, uh, my hypothesis is that they have to do with soul wounding having a chance to clear, rather than the eternal souls of people being warped in that way, generally speaking. It's one in a quadrillion people that make so many wrong choices in their lifetime and over many lifetimes that they have no choice left to them except for soul devolution and completely disappearing from, from individual reality, individual uh, understanding of the matter that they are. So, so in general I'm very hopeful about these, these cognitive dissonance notions that are going around in the newosphere right now, I think it represents soul clearing, not a bunch of people acting like lunatics. <laughs> Sorry, not a bunch of... Wait, I'll change that. And not a bunch of people that are actually acting out such extremely um, um, dissonant behaviors. I really sincerely pray that that is so. 
uh, and hope that all of these people and all of these um, woundings of the soul clear in this next two week period. So here's a ravine that goes down, 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 down between the mountains to the ocean. And way down there is the ocean. It's not a day for view viewing blue waves. <laughs> In fact, I can barely see gray ripples. <laughs> <laughs>